If you have to call yourself an alpha male, then actually you have a deeply rooted insecurity. The people who seem least manly are the people who are always bragging about their masculinity. I cannot stand it. One of the things that I really love talking about on this channel is the crisis that we're having with mascul masculinity at the moment. Sure. And uh, I've had people on the podcast who have made a pretty good case actually for not wanting to get married, especially not wanting to get married in the West and what it means to be a man and what it means to be a man in the modern, in the modern world, um, in the current dating scene with social media and all of these corrupting influences that we've got happening at the moment. Yeah. According to Trent Horn, what does it mean to be a good man? To be a good man is to take your gifts of masculinity and to use them for the good of others. So um, there's two extremes, right? There's one extreme that says men and women aren't different at all. There, there's really no relevant differences to men and women. And that's that's not true. I mean, men are on average larger. They're more, they're more prone to taking risks. Uh, they tend to be physically stronger than women. They tend to have better spatial reasoning than women. And women are different. Uh, women, for example, tend to be better at uh, verbal reasoning and linguistics when you do cognitive exams, things like that. So, the, And they tend to be better at interpersonal dynamics and empathy and, and nurturing and things like that. So there are feminine gifts and there are masculine gifts. What it means to be a man is to use your masculine gifts, strength, reasoning, stratagem, what, you know, whatever it may be, for the good of others hmm. rather than for the good of just yourself. That an, a bad man is someone who uses his masculine strengths to exploit, to oppress others just for his benefit. A good man is someone who uses it for the benefit of others. So he's a soldier, a firefighter, a dad going to work, uh, using his strength for the benefit of others. Really strong answer, man. Really strong answer. And uh, it doesn't it just doesn't it just make the world go around though, that answer in a nutshell? Couldn't you just extrapolate that endlessly and and yeah. it's what makes healthy societies? And, and if you notice also for the crisis of masculinity for men today, if you are a man and whether I mean this is true for anybody, but especially for men, if you are spending all of your time I trying to entertain yourself or blaming other people and especially blaming groups of people for the problems in your life, you're going to be miserable. Mm -hmm. What makes someone authentic masculinity, a real man is he doesn't, entertainment is fine. Recreation and leisure is fine, but he's not trying to always entertain himself. He's investing in himself. So I would say that if, if you're if you're a man and you feel, you know, just kind of lost out there, focus on investing in yourself. Even if you're non-religious, you can just start with, look, going to the gym and exercising. You don't want to become a meathead or something like that, but being physically balanced, finding balance in the different areas of life. So physically, not being a meathead, but at least being in shape. You're not wheezing all the time. Mm -hmm. You're, you know, eat, you're not eating out all the time. Eat a salad. They're actually good for you. They can be fun. Uh, not pouring yourself into social media. I'm disconnected from almost all social media, and I've never been happier. Yeah, yeah hard man um, to reach. Yeah. I had to tweet at you. <laughs> I know, but the, my Twitter now, I barely, I, I don't really respond to people anymore, and I don't mm -hmm. go on um, other stuff. Uh, but there's lots of things, you know, video games. Once again, it's all about balance. I enjoy video games. But when you are spending hours upon hours just trying to, how can I entertain myself? How can I have fun? How can I go out with people? What's the next thing I'm going to do? Instead of investing in yourself physically, emotionally, spiritually, financially, vocationally, that especially, I think some young men, they get this weird chip on their shoulder. They're like, oh, women out there, they're, they're, they're just awful and they only want chads and they're, you know, they're, they're terrible. And there are women who are, you know, picky or selfish. There are men who are picky and selfish. I would say, yeah, but what, what do you have to offer? Hmm. What do you have to offer them for them to come knocking down your door? You know, are, have you invested in yourself so you have a stable career and you can support a family? You know, have you invested in yourself physically so that you have masculine strength and you have energy to play with kids and you, you can take care of a family? 
Uh, have you invested in yourself intellectually and culturally so that you have interesting things to talk about and you can carry a conversation and you you're, you have self-esteem in yourself apart from anyone else so that you can just have fun with a girl you're getting to know and you're not this needy, clingy person who's always afraid she's going to like bail or something like that, that you you are both independent people who complement one another. So I would say that if investing in yourself and ultimately God going to God, he made you a man. He could have made you a woman. He didn't do that. He made you a man and he could have not made you at all. He made you and he made you a man for a very particular purpose. And so by drawing close to him, you'll be better at understanding, understanding that purpose. Mm. Do you know what I get from that as well? When I hear you say that Trent, uh, the, mm. it, it rings true to me that there's just no shortcuts with this stuff. And you actually have to invest in yourself as a man. And you have to actually uh, be able to, like you said, hold a good conversation and be in decent physical shape. And this takes a lot of hard work. And it really stinks to me when I see guys out there who are posturing and uh, trying to, to be something that they're clearly not. And they've sort of heard someone say something on, on the internet and they try and just be like that guy, be like that guy without trying to actually invest in themselves. Oh, I, I, cannot, their I cannot stand it. I find the people who seem least manly to me are the people who are always bragging about their masculinity or using these exterior signs to try to show off. So maybe they go to the gym and they, they, they bulk up some muscle or they smoke cigars and they talk about women in, in a, a callous way. And they'll, they'll, they puff out their chests when they talk and they swear and they, I mean, what I'm describing, you can find people like this all over the internet. If you have to call yourself an alpha male, if you have to call yourself, I'm a man, I'm masculine, then actually you have a deeply rooted insecurity. The most masculine men I know are dads who are just comfortable. They can operate on little sleep, but they're strong. They're there for their kids. They're there for their wives. They get their work done. And, uh, but I love like the dads that I'll roll with like at jujitsu. And these are guys in like their forties and fifties. And they're not going around like, oh, I'm this man, I'm this man. Like I love some of the, the dads that I roll with. They're black belts and they look like average middle-aged dudes. It's yeah. so funny. I feel like when you box, boxing gives you kind of a kind of a ripped physique. Jiu-jitsu, you, it doesn't necessarily rip you, but it gives you like crazy kinds of strength and ag hidden agility. So I, yeah. I, know, I, have, I know dads that I work with, you know, that they they look like just regular guys and would be like oh look at that beta male oh, he is not a beta male he could he could choke you out in about 10 yeah, seconds yeah, yeah. if he wanted to but you wouldn't see that immediately because he's not posturing all the time he's invested in himself physically spiritually financially and emotionally he's a good dad good husband and he's actually a really tough man but he doesn't have to go around bragging about it when you're weak and insecure you project this tough guy image but when you actually become tough and you've invested in yourself and you have discipline in all the areas of your life, there is a sense of toughness there that people can see that you don't have to project to other people. Mm, man, I could not agree more. And I, I can't tell you how many times I've done that in my life, especially when I was in my younger years. It's sort of gotten less and less as I've gotten older and particularly about eight years ago when I started boxing, it got much less. I used to like love getting in fights and joining gangs and all, all of this sort of stuff. And and yeah, once you sort of get a but little it, bit more security about yourself, then yeah, you don't, really you don't have to, you, you just walk around. And even if there is an opportunity to fight someone, you think to yourself, Couldn't I could probably take, I, I could take that guy. I don't feel the need to do that. I don't want to mm -hmm. do that. I don't have to do that. You, you, you have that. Whereas I think you're right. A lot of guys who are craving masculinity and affirmation, that's one thing they'll do. They'll get in fights with people to try to prove how tough they are, which Maybe that'll work against someone who's a lot weaker than you, but you could misjudge the situation and it could be really bad. If you enjoyed that reality-based podcast clip, make sure to subscribe to the reality-based YouTube channel. We'll be uploading many clips and the full podcast. And also, if you prefer the audible version, you can check us out on Spotify and Apple Podcasts at Reality Based.